We have two spotlight events this week on Tuesday and Wednesday, and I'm about to hit level 50. Let's get into it. I'm Professor Vokas, and this is Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Hello, Professor. I didn't see you there. Let's start things off by leveling up, because if you can see my experience right now, I'm at 699.478. I'm like right there on the cusp, and Death Eaters are out. So if you didn't already know, tomorrow, um, today is Sunday for me, Monday is the new moon, so you should be able to, by the time you watch this video, be able to still get Death Eaters for at least a day or so. So look out for them. Anyway, oh, I should probably be not getting destroyed by it while I talk to you guys. But let's see if I get enough. I can't remember how much experience they give me. This may put me over. I almost accidentally leveled up yesterday. I finally just had to close the game to not accidentally level up because I wanted I wanted to level up with you guys, especially 50, such an iconic um, level. And we'll talk about why. How much experience was that? 250? That's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough. But I know I do have this port key that just unlocked. Let me put my new one in and then let's open this one. And if I get some experience from this, even a small amount, it is an event port key though. Cause remember, I'm still trying to build up that Slytherin uh, Quidditch banner. So let's just grab something. Oh, I need that ingredient. Did I get any experience? <laughs> I got none, but I did get another Quidditch banner. So that's good. All right, so let's back out and let's go over. Let's return this foundable. See if that puts us over the top. How fitting, it's a Ravenclaw student, and here I am in my Ravenclaw robes. Nice. Oh, that'd be great if he puts me over. It was a first turn, uh, 110 might not be enough. It just so happens I do have a gift from Deshonu, one of my friends, uh, real life friends up in uh, Maryland. He sent me a gift, and look what kind of gift it is. It's a wizard XP gift. So Deshonu, if you're watching this, l let it be known that your gift is gonna, what is gonna put me into 50. Oh. My energy capacity is full. How far over am I? <laughs> I'm like 10 over, so I can't even pick it up. All right, so there's one more thing I can do. So to show new, yes, you would have put me over, but I can't pick up the gift because it has energy in it. But we can go to the registry. I've been saving, I have so many images in here, so any of them are gonna get it to me. Um, this uh, Magic Most Evil, I've held on to 55 out of 55 on Borgen and Burks forever. I'm just gonna place the image. Maybe I'll get a Trace Charm recharge, you never know. But it's definitely gonna give me some experience once it, it's gonna rank me up. That's what's giving me the experience, not the image itself. No Trace Charm recharge, but let's back out. And there we are, level 50, yes. SOS training, we're gonna go check out what I unlocked and why 50 is so iconic. So you can see, unlock the thing, go check it out in a sec. Silver keys, tonic for trace detection, and more dark detectors. I have so many, I'm so ready to use them when they start working again properly. So it took me right to the SOS. You can see the level 50 node is the last node you will unlock from leveling up. The other ones cost stuff. Level 50 is the last level where you get something kind of for free. And it's Brief History of Magic, it's uh, in charm Efficacy, which, um, which isn't the most amazing thing in the world, but I'll get a little more energy each time I use that uh, in charm. So I'm not gonna worry about building anything off of there right now. I will look at it later, but even if it was some things that don't involve Defense Against Dark Arts books, I might consider if it's ministry manuals, but Defense Against Dark Arts books at this point, I'm saving them for the adversary tree. Um, I feel like that's gonna be better because it's a way to build up more Defense Against Dark Arts books. So I might as well get good at that. Then I can grind out more to use on the SOS tree where I see fit. Well, now I only have 10 levels to go before I hit max level and it's only 750 to the next level from 50 to 51, so not too bad. So let's go ahead and talk about the two spots light events. Um, one is on Tuesday and one is on Wednesday this week, which is the 15th and the 16th. They're going to happen from 5 p.m. until 11.59 p.m. midnight, um, local time, so whatever your local time is. The Tuesday one is a tonic for trace detection based one, and the Wednesday is a night bus one. So let's talk about the tonic for trace detection first. It's revolving around the burrow, the burrow being the Weasley's home in all the Harry Potter books and movies. Um, so you're going to get Arthur Weasley from Ministry of Magic. You're going to get young Ginny Weasley, Fred and George from Legends of Hogwarts, and Quidditch Keeper Ron from Magical Games and Sports. So it's just kind of going through the Weasleys that are available currently in-game. The tonic won't produce only those, but it seems to be about 50%. 50% of the spawns you get from the tonic should be these. So if it's something you need, and if we go to the registry, I'll just show you real quick. Registry, we'll start at Legends of Hogwarts. So on this page here, that's young Ginny Weasley. So you could get her. And then if we go down a couple pages, 
Fred and George on the room requirement five. It's those two right there, which I do need to place their images. I'm 10 out of 13 on both of them. So that will be useful for me to be able to get them at least green starred and ready to go to gold. Young Jenny, on the other hand, I've already placed her for silver. So it would really just be building up some fragments to carry over to gold, which isn't bad, but it's not anything essential I'm looking for. Arthur, on the other hand, is over here at the Ministry of Magic in the courtroom 10 page. And he is actually the only non-fortress foundable I need. So again, um, Nymphadora Tonks and um, Mad-Eye Moody, I've already placed both of those. In fact, Nymphadora, I've got 15 fragments to carry over to silver. He, though, I'm missing. So I'm definitely hoping to get three more fragments, build them up to 20 so I can place the image. So when I get those fortress foundables, I can prestige. And then I'm probably going to try to build up as much as I can to carry over to the silver page so I don't have as long to wait. I used to see him much more often. It's within the past, I don't know, six months. I just haven't seen him as much. Early on in the game, I seem to see him a lot more. And lastly, on Hogwarts Quidditch pitch, that's where Quidditch Keeper Ron is. I have nothing green starred on this page. Um, he's only four out of 13, but I'm still missing decent numbers of other things. Not a ton, but decent. But it'll be a welcome thing for me to get those other nine fragments if I'm able to. Again, Tonic for trace detection is necessary. These aren't just spawning. You have to use a tonic for trace detection to get these foundables to appear for you, unless you just happen to get lucky enough to get one of them to appear kind of just normally. It has nothing to do with the spotlight hour. So between five and midnight, try to find some time in there and go ahead and pop a tonic when you can sit down and really focus. And you should be able to build up some of those fragments, which is nice. No tasks involved with this, nothing else, just that. Moving on to the, I say fortress event, it's a, it'll really be more of a night bus event, I guess. You could go to fortresses. But on the night bus, there's gonna be three specific chambers that if you go to those chambers, you are guaranteed to get specific fragments, specific challenge fragments this time. Um, and I'm actually on the page now. It's under Joke Products 1, it's Joke Products 2, and then it's Joke Products 3. It's three different things. So starting with Joke Products 1, the extendable ears, I am gold on this and I'm already green starred on it. So this day isn't actually gonna be as useful for me at all because these are lower level chamber challenge fragments you get anyway. But if you go to Tower Chamber 5 and you use any runestone, which means if you have old brilliance you don't have any use for, you can be running through those. But Tower Chamber 5, if you use any runestone and complete it, then you're going to automatically get extendable ears as your challenge fragment. So that's nice. Keep in mind, this is local time. So if you go into someone else's chamber, a Tower 5, that somebody else has begun that's not in their own spotlight hours, then you might not get this. So the best way to do that is to at least go into a Tower 5 and start the chamber yourself. Be the first one in there. There's also some debate about who hits join first, but I do believe when you start the chamber, that actually establishes whose chamber it is, what time zone it is following the rules of. Moving down to Joke Products 2, the uh, You Know Poo, that right there is going to come from Forest Chamber 5. So Forest Chamber 5, any runestone, no matter what, you're going to get this as your challenge fragment. So if you need to finish this out as well, again, I'm gold and I have a green starred. A lot of people have this, so I know it's not useful for maybe people that are, have played a while. For newer players though, if you don't have it yet, it'll be a great way to do it. And I'll have one more comment about what else it can be useful for. So here in Joke Products 3 is the last one. It's the Skiving Snack Box. Keep in mind, it's not to be confused with the Open Skiving Snack Box, which is actually in your regular registry. And uh, Wonders of the Wizarding World, I think it's under Weasley's Wizarding Weezes. It's a fortress foundable. It, this is talking about this Skiving Snack Box. So if you run Dark 5, no matter what runestone, you're going to get this, which is kind of a bummer because Dark 5 normally would give you much better challenge fragments, and by better I just mean rarer, harder to get ones. This one you could get from lower level chambers anyway, so again, not as big a deal. Now the only bonus I would say for any of these, although extendable years, I need 25 fragments, I'm 16 away from you know poo, and um, I'm only 10 away from the Skyving Snack Box, but I don't feel like running Dark 5 that much. It's very energy intensive. I would have to run it 10 times to get it, and I could run lower level chambers and maybe have a shot at it anyway. But the other reason you might at least do it a couple times is because when you do get challenge experience and rank up, it's gonna give you the red books, the spell books, and they're going to be useful in the adversary tree. So that's the only thing I can think of, of how, why this would be useful to someone that already has this, is if you were close, maybe run those chambers just to get this image quicker and get that challenge 
uh, stuff so you can get some a couple ministry manuals it's not many it's three when you're on the gold page um, but then just for the challenge experience to get that rank up to get spellbook definitely a bit of a quicker video today mainly I really wanted to hit 50 definitely for video and yesterday oh my gosh it was crazy because I finished that video and I was still a little bit away but I then um, put a tonic on because I wanted to build up some more fragments and I almost accidentally I was just returning foundables and I stopped and said let me go look at my experience and that's when I was at that 699 and some change so if I just hadn't thought of it right then and had done one more foundable it would have ranked up right then which again not the end of the world but 50 is pretty iconic um, but I also wanted to put out this video today for spotlight um, events, so it worked out perfect to be able to level up with you guys real quick, like, and then look at these spotlight events. So we've got Monday, we've got the whole day off. If you're watching this on Monday, then you've got the rest of the day. I say off, you don't have anything specific. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, it's really at your leisure to decide how those events apply to you. Keep in mind, these events, if you don't like the hours, if you don't like what they're doing, these they keep using the word experimental, and they really are. They've even, I'm glad that they're at least being upfront about how they're wanting to handle these events is they've put these out and they've even said, we are just trying to test out, see how they go. Because they're gonna be able to look, you know, how many people were playing during those times so that they can figure out better times. Um, how many people actually participated? So was that actually good or bad? And then in addition, the feedback from the community itself on Reddit, on Discord, on community uh, forums, dot, on the Harry Potter site. But anyway, just keep in mind that um, if you don't like these events, not a big deal. We're not missing anything. There's not Defense Against Dark Arts books be giving out, not restricted section books. There's nothing like that. It's more just helping people fill out their registry, which again, as I commented about the last time they did this, the first two experimental, I really like that they're introducing this type of thing into the game. I think it really does help newer players to catch up. Even experienced players, if there's that one fragment from Fortress or from uh, your regular registry, it's just going to help you get that. And if you don't want to, you're not missing anything. The whole fear of missing out doesn't occur during these events because there's nothing you're missing. What other people are gaining, you already have it, so it's not a big deal and there's nowhere to get ahead. Anyway, that's my take on these. They should keep doing them, keep getting feedback, and they can slowly fine-tune them to just make them more and more useful. And it might even be the type of thing that's more useful one month and less useful the next month to some of us, which I'm also fine with. As always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully we get some new news about adversaries soon, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Knox.